All right, hopefully uh, Maya's just tardy and I won't miss today, but um, I want you to know I sent you an email today. I literally built this thing in about a minute or two. It's not a real website, but I sent you an email. It says practice website. It's what I'm going to use today to show you some stuff. You look up on the screen here. This is what it looks like. Nothing. I mean, it's just all text, just so you know. And it has three pages in it, but we're going to learn how to go back and forth between pages. All right. And um, look at a few other things as I go over today, Chapter 4. All right. So that's what I plan on doing. So Chapter 4 in your book starts on page 123. This is what I think we ought to do for the rest of the week, okay? Um, I'm going to go over chapter four. I'm going to really go slow because it's CSS. You may have had you may have had some in the past, etc. But um, it'll give us a chance to really go and do this in a lot of depth and breadth of coverage. All right. If there's any time left today, and there probably will be, you can start then on the homework for the Shape Up and the Halloween store for chapter four. All right. And I'm going to give you some time tomorrow also to work on that. What we're going to do Friday, and I haven't written it yet, but I'm going to do it between now and Friday, is I'm going to literally create a very simplistic little website that we'll create as a class. All right? And I believe if you do this and you have that knowledge, it will help you because what I want to do is I want to push the test out till Monday, the hands-on test. But we'll make it on 1, 2, 3, and 4. All right, after I go over Chapter 4 today, I already have for you a study guide for Chapter 4. So we'll go over that, all right, and we'll plan on taking the hands-on, I'm sorry, the written test for Chapter 4 Friday morning, okay, when you first get here. That's two days from now. So Chapter 4 again, it talks about CSS. It's the first of three straight chapters on CSS all right and if you look there'll be an intro then we'll talk about measurements and colors I'm gonna give you some of my own recommendations and if you go forget you I'm gonna do it the way I want you're gonna do it the way you want anyway all right but the stuff that I'm going to show you is more or less what's considered the the quote better way unquote of doing it today all right so we'll talk about that We'll talk about selectors. We've talked about that a little bit, but we'll talk about it some more. We'll talk about what cascading really means, some different things that you can do with text, etc. As I have been doing, I'm not going to spend much time going over the page here that's on the left. I'll spend more time going on the page that's on the right. All right. We've talked about this already, but I'm saying it again. That is, there are three different ways that you can create a style sheet. All right? One is to literally create, literally come in there and you create an external sheet. So it's its own file. All right? If you don't want to do that, you can put style tags on any page. All right? You can also apply CSS to an individual element. So when you look at it, this is the kind of thing right here. If you were to link an external style sheet that you'd use for an entire website. Does that make sense? So if I wanted all the coloring, etc., for my website to be the same, it's probably what I'd do. All right. If I had something unique I wanted to put on a certain page of the website, I might very well use this. Okay? So the first one, the external is kind of website-wide. This is kind of page-wide. All right? Then, again, if I wanted to do something just on an element, in this case, this is just that H1 element. What am I doing? I'm making it five times its regular size, and I'm making it red. Does that make sense? All right? Now, this is considered the worst way of doing things, just so you know. This is considered the worst way of doing things, using a style attribute. And it's the worst way because what you're doing is now you're putting your CSS 
right inside of your HTML. So that's considered the absolute worst way of doing things. This is a little better. And in fact, what a lot of books do is rather than have to switch back and forth between files, what they do is they put everything in style tags, then they move it to an external file. All right, but this is considered the best way to use something external like that. Not only that, when you look at it, okay, notice what it says here. It says href equals style slash main dot CSS. What that means is this is assuming that there is a folder in your project called styles. Inside of that folder, is a file called main.css. All CSS files must end with .css. They must end with that extension. Now, in the example, and Maya, you missed this, but I, I've sent you all an email today, and in that email is this very simple little website that I created that has no color, no nothing to it. It's got this page, then it's got another page that says it's under construction, and another page that says that's under construction. All right, something weird happened today. Now all of a sudden, well, must you know, make me a liar now? <laughs> no, it did. Um, this works. My Visual Studio code works. I can open it up now with Live Server. I couldn't do that any other day. For the hell of it, I opened it up this morning and it worked just fine. Why? I wish I had a clue, but I don't. But that's fine. All right. But what I want to show you about this is if you look in here, and this is the file, the thing that I gave you, all right? And let's see, I guess it won't let me move this over any. But so far, I've got in here what? File, open file. You can see that in here, all I've got in here are three HTML files. That makes sense to everybody? That's all that's in there. I can come in here, and I'm going to do this right now just so you see it. I'm going to right mouse click in here, and I'm going to choose New and Folder, and I'm going to create a folder called CSS. All right? And I'm going to open that, and in there, I'm going to create a brand new file, and I'm going to call it style.css. You don't have to call it that, but that's kind of a standard way of saying things. All right, so I'm going to put that in there. It's going to come back and it's going to give me an error saying, are you sure you want to change this? Yes, I do. So I'm going to click yes and click. Um, let's see, I don't need to open it. Well, I guess I can open it right now. There's nothing in there. Does that make sense? Now, what I'm going to do is... I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say body. Body, come on. And I'm going to say in here color pink. Why? Because it stands out. Okay? So I'm just going to do a file and I'm going to tell it to save everything. Okay? Then I'm going to jump back to my index page. Now, this should make sense to every one of you in here. When I open this with Live Server, it doesn't look any different because I did not yet apply the CSS file to the page. So I'm going to do that right now. So I'm going to come back in here, and you do it someplace in your head section. It really doesn't matter where, but I'll do it right at the bottom. And I'm going to put in here link. Now, I can put in here link rel equals style sheet href equals css slash notice it picked it up it sees i've got a file called style.css and i can do that that's that's great and it'll work that's the way we've done things correct but just so you know there's some built-in shortcuts in this editor. For instance, if I type in the word link by itself and hit the tab key, see what it does? Now, is that fantastic? No. But it's a little nicer because it provides a little bit of a shortcut for you. So again, I'll say CSS slash 
style.css. All right, I'm going to do a file, and I'm going to tell it to save. Come on. This is what's weird about what's what I've got here. So, And now when I come in here and I open it with Live Server, it's pink. So it worked, correct? All right. Now, that might be ugly as hell. We don't care about that right now. All right. That's totally fine. I can always comment that line out or do anything. The point is what I was trying to show you there was you what you just went over, what we just looked at in here, is I showed you a way of adding an external file. All right. Then if I wanted to, let's look at the second way where you use the style tag. All right. So I'm going to come back into here and I'm going to say, you know what? Underneath this, I'm going to put in just a style tag. In fact, let's see if I type in style and hit tab. Boom. It gives me the beginning and ending style tags. All right. And I'm going to say in here, for my footer, and I've got a footer down at the bottom, okay, and I want that background to be gray, and let's say the color to be white, okay? So let's come back in here. I can refresh. Would you agree that worked? So that's the second way that we can add CSS. That is adding it just, you know, basically to this page. All right. Let's talk about the third way. So let's say that for some reason I'm very vain in where it says my document. I want that word my to be really big. Okay. Don't ask me why. Let's just, we're just going to pretend I want to do that. So where it says this is my document. I'm going to come in here, and I don't use this ever, but just to show you, all right, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say style equal font size 200%. All right, and I want the style to end after the word my all right so let's see what that did again I'm going back to my document here I'm refreshing doesn't look like it worked so let's see if we can figure out why all right style font size equal 200 percent well if you look I didn't put it in the double quote there it look like I did so style equal font size 200 percent like I said I don't use this but I'm trying to figure it, use it based on what they're showing in the book. Let's try to remove this. So we'll leave the style equals that we've got in there. And I'm just going to remove the ending style tag. All right. I don't know if that'll do anything. That's that's why it's giving me an error. It's telling me I don't have an ending tag. But it doesn't like it. We'll just hold off on that one for a while. I will tell you, I would not test you on that, on a hands-on test, not because it didn't work, because no one does that. All right. Now, let's say that it just bugs the hell out of you. I, I want to find out how you do that. All right. Well, I can always come in here and type in inline CSS styling W3 schools. And somewhere in here, it will show me. Again, there's the style attribute. So I have to go in here and take a look. See, now there's an example. All right, let's, let's grab the example that they have right there. They're saying that we want the color of a paragraph to be green. All right, P style, color equal green. All right, let's see if that works. Yeah. All right. 
Now, I'm not sure why the first one didn't work. I don't care. Like I said, I'm never going to ask you to use that. But what I want to get across to you, does it make sense to everyone? I've just shown you three different ways that you can include CSS. All right. Again, this is typically external, internal, and inline. Now, they go by different names. Not everybody agrees with the names that I just gave you. All right. The author calls it embedded. I, I was when I the book that I learned this from called it internal. It's not that important one way or the other. All right. Now, browser compatibility. We're going to look at two things you have not seen yet. All right. Here's the first one. So in my head section, I'm going to go and I'm going to grab this and I'm going to say copy it to the clipboard. I'm going to come back into my document. And again, it doesn't matter where in the head section I put it. So I'll put it right at the bottom. All right. Yeah, I know it gives me all that garbage. Now, I'm not even saying you can read this, and I can't, for whatever reason, it's not letting me, again, make my stuff any smaller. But what I want to show you is this. This line right here, okay, it's called an HTML5 shim, S-H-I-M, or an HTML5 shiv. To make, keep it simple, what it says is if you're using an old browser and the browser doesn't understand the new tags, don't have the website break. That's what it's telling it. Now, the only reason you typically have to put that in there is if you have someone who's using Internet Explorer 6, 7, 8, or earlier. If you're like, well, nobody uses that. You can go out there and actually look. There's probably about 5% of people who fit that. And if you want your website to service all 100% of people, you can put that in. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. Now, the other thing I want to show you on here is they're going to talk about a file named Normalize. So am I in just a second. But the first thing I want to do is I want to take this link stuff that I put in here, all that link stuff. So the style sheet and this, and I want to comment it out. So in other words, when I go back to here, I'm trying to figure out what, oh, I still got that green in there. But you notice how everything else reverted back to the way it was? Let's get that green out of there too. All right, so now it's all back to the way it looked, okay? You may or may not realize this. The browser, by default, adds styling to your document. You may know that. You may not know that. And I want to show you how you can even see that styling. You may have seen this before. You may not have seen this before. But right here, what I'm going to do, and I'm assuming right now when, I'm, when I do this, if you're going to follow along, you're going to use Chrome, all right, as your browser. So, yeah, do you all have function keys up at the top of your keyboard? F1, F2, F3, etc. I'm going to hit the F12 key, all right, and that brings up my tools, okay. And I can go all over the place, but if you notice, one of the places I can go, and I know it's kind of hard to see it here, is I click right at the beginning where it says Elements. See that? And then over here. It's got a bunch of junk. It's got element style, body, display, block, margin, 8 pixels. These are things the browser adds. If you had brought this same site up in Internet Explorer or Firefox, these might be different. Did you hear me? All right. The other thing, look, please look on the screen here. It's kind of important. I'm going to move this up even a little higher. See this? This is what... What is it? Chapter. This is what the next chapter is all about. Is what's called the CSS box model. See this on the screen right here? This is what I put in here. This right here, that is this is my document. Around that, even though there's nothing right now, is what's called padding. Around that is a border. Around that 
is a margin. Now you might look at that and go, well, that doesn't make sense. We're going to talk. That's what the entire next chapter is about. And I'm going to explain the difference to you between margin and border and padding. As soon as you see them, you'll be like, oh, that makes sense. Yes? The part that honestly doesn't make sense to me is how the little blue square is the document and you can put stuff everywhere even up to the margin. Yes, you can. Because by default, there is margin in here. So, I mean, kind of to your point, yeah, I guess that makes sense. kind of to your point, I'm going to go out here and on the internet, I'm going to type in Eric Myers CSS Reset. Eric Meyer is kind of one of the people who was the most involved when CSS was created. All right? So he's got this file that he encourages people to use. Now notice what he's doing here. This is not quite, but it's almost every C, every HTML tag there is. And he's saying for all those tags on the screen, have no margin, have no padding, have no border, Use the default font size, all right, etc. All right, and it's turning off a bunch of stuff. Why am I even showing you that? I'm going to grab this file right here. I'm going to copy all of it to the clipboard. All right, I'm going to go into Visual Studio Code and I'm going to do a file, new file, and I'm going to paste it in. Okay, there it all is. And I'm going to do a file, save as. Boy, I wish this didn't do that. And I'm going to save it into my CSS folder. And I'm going to call it reset.css. Okay, notice how the color changed? All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to this page. You just saw what this looked like. You've already seen our site. I'm going to hit F12 again so this goes away. You know exactly what that looks like, right? Now I'm going to apply that reset file to this file. What do, what do I mean? Well, I'm going to come back in here, and I'm going to go in, and I'm going to say link rel equals style sheet href equals css slash reset dot css. Make sense to you what I just did? All right, now let's see how that changed things. Does that look a little different now? I told it to turn off everything. Now there's no margin, there's no nothing. It still works. Yes. Well, no, that's not true. If you save it as an HTML, it pops up the first way. Because... There is default stuff. I've told it to turn all defaults off. Right, right, right. Now, in our book, they encourage you to use the file that's under GitHub that's called normalize.css. It basically does the same thing. Why all right? do you encourage you to turn off defaults? Because the, the, what you want is you want your website to look the same on all browsers. So by turning all those off, you're turning off the defaults for any browser. So you're starting with a clean slate, so to speak. All right. If you do go out to this site right here, okay, it'll give you a zip file. And in that zip file is normalize.css. You can use it, and it works the same way. All right. So let's say, let's just say, all right, you're looking at this, and you're like, yeah, whatever. But that just seems like too much work. And, you know, in this file, there's too much junk in here. I don't want to turn all that stuff off. All I want, all I want is at the beginning of my program. I don't want there to be any margin. I don't want there to be any padding. That makes sense? I don't want there to be any of it. Well, then I can go into my CSS file that I created this style, would you agree there's really nothing in there? All right, I'm going to turn this off. I don't, I don't want it to be pink anyway. But I can put in what's called a universal selector, which means everything. And it's an asterisk. So I'm going to say asterisk, and I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to say 
margin zero, padding zero. So that's saying that if I put this file in here, I want there to be no margin, I want there to be no padding. Does that make sense? All right, so I'm going to save this file. Come on, save. All right, now I'm going to go back into here and where I'm linking in this reset file, I'm going to turn that off. And where I have my link file, where I'm putting in my style file, I'm going to turn that back on. So in other words, I'm telling it to use the file that has this. Does that, does that make sense? Yes. Yes. It expects there to be a less than sign, an exclamation point, and two minuses, and then expects on the end two minuses and a greater than sign. That's what it expects. Gotcha. Yeah. I was just making, I was just curious if it was the same every time. Yeah, it, it should be. Now, let's take a look at how this changed. And it doesn't look any different. Because the stuff that I had changed was margin and padding. All right. So, I mean, that was a lot less work. I think you'd agree with that. But what I'm going to ask, and you didn't hear this, but um, what we're going to do today, I'm really taking my time. We're going through all of Chapter 4. If there's any time left, you can start working on the end of chapter exercises for Shape Up and for Halloween Store for Chapter 4. You'll also get time tomorrow to work on that. Friday, we're going to build a site from scratch. Everybody, we're just going to create a, a two or three page website from scratch. All right. And if you understand everything that's in there, then on Monday, we're going to have our first written test. And it'll be on one, two, three, and four. Open book, open notes, etc. If you can understand everything that we do on Friday, and you ask if you have questions, you should all get 100% on the thing we do Monday. All right. But uh, also Friday morning, we will have the written test for Chapter 4. All right? So we're doing good. We, we, we want to cover about two chapters a week. All right? And we're doing, that's pretty much what we're doing. So as you probably guessed, next week, we'll have just Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday because Monday we'll take the test. All right? And if it turns out that, it, that we do the test Monday, some of you may need more time than others. Some of you may finish it in a half an hour. Some of you may need four hours. It doesn't matter. What's the old saying? It's a, it's a marathon, not a sprint. All right? And it doesn't matter. But let's just suppose it's 10 o'clock and all of you get it done. Then we might start on Chapter 5. I mean, if it's 11 o'clock, I won't have enough time to finish Chapter 5. It wouldn't make sense to start on it. I'll just say, hey, just use the rest of the period for lap. All right? So we'll see how people are doing on Monday. All right? So what I wanted you to get out of what I just showed you, there's three different ways, at a minimum, that you can go and add things. I, I showed you that shiv. I don't care if you put this in or not. It's considered good practice to put that in, just so you know. And you put it into the head section. All right? Um, but I, I either I want you to go in and... Put in this, you know, grab that file and include normalize or include the reset file I showed you. So when you take your test on Monday, I will tell you to add a reset file. All right. Also, please look up on the screen. Most important thing so far today. If you're going to use a reset file, any kind, if you're going to use a reset file, it must that re oh, that's why. Okay, I was wondering. Watch, it's going to look different in a second. Okay, but that's fine. You must put the reset file before your file. Because if you don't, you just reset everything you've done. That wouldn't make a lot of sense. This is going to look a little bit different now. Now, now all I have in here is the head, the, the no margin, no padding. See if it looks different. All right. You say, well, maybe a little. Look what's back, though. H1, 
all those defaults are back. See that? So the only thing I've turned off now by using that universal selector, all the only thing I turned off was no margin, no padding. All right. And again, if, if you know if you're going to look at this between now and Monday of next week, I'd strongly suggest if you know you well, I don't have much time, Jeff. Look at least at the pages on the right because they got examples over everything we're going through. All right. Tell you what, we'll go till 8:55. <clears throat> we'll take a break. All right. So next page. How to specify measurements and colors. All right. Please look at the chart here. Very important. Almost, almost always in this class, we'll never use those first two things that you see there. PX for pixels, PT for points. We'll almost never use them. And the reason we'll almost never use them, excuse me, is the fact those are absolute units of measurement. Doesn't matter if it's on your phone or a tablet or whatever. If you say you want something to be 100 pixels, it's going to try to make it 100 pixels even if it's on your phone. So even if it's gigantic on your phone and you can't read it, it doesn't matter. So when you are creating websites today, the idea is you use pixels and points as little as possible and ideally never. All right. We will use M's, but more than M's, we will use something called REMs. So what's the difference between a REM and an M? We'll use REMs because what REMs do is they use all the stuff that you defined as defaults at the top of the program, but you can still change them. And if you say, I don't have any idea what you're talking about, I'm going to show you right now. All right. So I'm going to come in here. And I'm going to go back into my file, all right, that we have. So I'm going to go back into the style file. I'm going to turn this off. I don't want to turn off my, I don't want padding turned off, etc. All right, in margin. But what I do want to do is I want to come in here and let's say, I don't know. I'm going to say for all my paragraphs, I want the font size to be, one rem. So I want the font size for all of my paragraphs to be one rem. Now remember, that's what it looks like right now. Okay? All right. So I'm going to come back and now I'll do a file save. And I'm going to come back and you say, it doesn't look any different because one rem is the default. One rem is 16 pixels. All right. Now, you tell me if it looks different. Now we've said it, make it 32 pixels. Double the size it is by default. And when you do this kinds of kind of stuff, you can even use decimals. Totally fine. Save that. Now it's kind of in between the size that it was originally and the size we made it when we made it bigger. But REMs and M's, so REMs and M's and percentages, those are relative units of measure. They try to scale based on the type of device you're using. So they'll try to make sure that it looks nice whether it's a laptop, a desktop, a phone, etc. Those are like mostly what you want to use for most Those are ideally that's what you'll use for virtually everything you do. Now, if you go out to websites, you're going to find people break that rule all the time. But it'll make it easier when you write your CSS if you use that. That's what I'm telling you. My question is why would you add, like what is where are pictures and points you use for? They're, they're, much of them, they're used for two or three different things. Number one, they're historical in nature. There are millions of sites that have them, period. And they're not going to change them, all right? Two, remember when we added the images and we said, like, height equal 140? Those are pixels, all right? 
And three, they are still used in some things, but it's just very rare that they are. All right? Because, again, they're absolute, and we, we live in a more relative type of world today. All right? Now, I'm going to show you something else. I'm sure they were used more like in like the early um, 2000s. Yeah. I'm going to come in here, and this may not make sense until I do a couple things. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here, and into this file, I'm going to come in, and I'm going to say HTML, and I'm going to say here background gray. Okay? All right. So what did that do? Is that pretty obvious what that just did? Okay? All right. Now I'm going to come in, and I'm going to say, you know what? I want my body, oops, and I want it to take up a width of 80% of the screen. All right, so width 80%. And I'm going to do something that may, may look a little different. I'm going to say background orange. All right, now let's look at what we have. What I want you to understand is this. Now, you see it's not centered. We'll center it in a minute. I don't care. But now we've told the body to only take up 80% of our screen. So the body and the, and the actual HTML are two different things. HTML is the entire window. Body is just what we want it to be. Now, I'm going to come through and I'm going to put another thing in here. I'm going to come in, come back in here, and I'm going to say, for our body, I'm going to say this, margin, zero, auto. This won't make sense until we go over margins in a couple minutes. Now does it make more sense? All right, now it's centered on the screen. Not only that, since we use percentage, See how it's still 80%? No matter how wide or narrow we make the screen. Now, I can go like this and screw it up, but it'll, it'll reset itself. So we're going to do this. It used to be that you, you know, here's to kind of answer your question, Max. It used to be what people would do is they would come in here and it's, whoops, instead of saying margin or uh, width 80%, they would say width 960 pixels. There's still tons of websites out there like that. Tons of them. So you come in here and look. That's what it is. See that? Oops. That's not responsive. So you use percentages here because percentages are responsive. All right, so actually, 960 pixels, you have to divide it by 16. Oh. No, 960 pixels is the same thing as 60 rem. Okay, so again, I come back in here now, and now it looks the way it did before. All right. Again, I'm just going to keep going through this stuff. Take them for granted. If you've got a question, you're going to ask. All right. So, again, absolute measurement, pixels and points, relative measurements, M's, REMs, and percents. Notice this type of measurement is relative. Okay. All right. Colors. We've done virtually nothing with colors. You may not agree. We've used these words, correct? Stuff like this, we've used you know color black, color white, color red. There are at least 16 of these names, and there's actually more of those. But you ever done that where you're working on something where you can work with colors, you tweak it and tweak it, you want it to be an exact color? I'm going to show you a couple different ways that, that you can set a color, yeah, with RGB. So I can come in here. And I can use RGB, all right? So I can say, for example, font. And I can say here RGB, and I put in three numbers here. 
So if I do this, those numbers, that's how much red I want, that's how much green I want, and that's how much blue I want. So RGB stands for red, green, blue. All right. The more I put in there, if I do this, if I if I say 255, 255, 255, that's called total saturation. That gives me white. That's the same thing as saying that should be font, that should be color. That's the same thing as saying color white. All right. So as you probably guess. If I put in 0, 0, 0, it'd be black. Does that make sense? That's a total, rather than a total saturation, it's a total absence. Does that, does that make sense? Yes. Uh, is, is there a, is 255 the highest? Yes. You know? When you use RGB. All right. So I can mix these any way I want. So what? Do you, just take it a guess. Look on the screen here. What would you guess? What color would you guess this would be? Red. Total red. All right. Now, the, the red that it uses might be a little bit different between different browsers, just so you know. And if I, you know, I'm not going to do it, but if I put a zero here and 255 here and zero, it would be green. Zero, zero, 255 would be blue. Does all that make sense? All right. There's another way that I can do colors also. I can come in and I can say color, pound sign, and in this case, if I wanted, let's make them all 255 again. I could say FF, FF, FF. These first two Fs are red. These second two Fs are green. These third two Fs are blue. So what the heck are these Fs? You may or may not have ever heard of this before, but this is hexadecimal, base 16. If I tell you to count to 10, you probably look at me like I got a screw loose, but you can all do it, right? In fact, there is an old computer joke, ask a programmer to count to 10. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay? Now, when, when, you, when you work with hexadecimal, it's base 16. So you say... 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F, 1, 0. That's how you count. So FF would be the highest. FF is 15 times 15 or... All right. Actually, it's not 15, 15, but it's, you get the idea. 16, 16. It's really, that's what you get. So there's a bunch of different ways to do one last thing, I'll take your question. Since these are the same, see that F, 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 you can do it just like that. Or there's a shortcut where you can just say color, pound, F, F, F. You can only do that if there's a matching like that. Okay? Question? Why wouldn't you use the color white? Okay, the que and what a lot of people will do is they'll use these. But if you want to keep tweaking it, I don't want white. There might be an eggshell white. I don't know. You know, but I can keep tweaking it, tweaking it, and get it exactly the way I want it to look. Yeah, I get that, but what's the difference between the RGB and the... In this case, there's no difference okay. between using white, this, this, or this. There's okay. none. It's when you come in and you start using, like, for instance, I want the color coral. Let's say, all right? And you may have seen these things already. You may not have. But to show you this real quick, <clears throat> let's say as an example, I want the, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm just make, kind of making this up, hex code for turquoise. All right? Then it'll show you, now notice there's one, there's one. So it shows them to you in both ways. So I'm just going to grab this. And it doesn't matter if you use capital letters or lowercase letters, just so you know. You can mix them, which is kind of silly, but if you wanted to, you could do that. So I'm going to come in here, 
and where we've got the background orange, I'm going to change that, and I'm going to put in that. Notice how it changed there? All right. Save it. Go back. Look at. Again, pretty obvious then. Yeah. So what Are you? Yeah. No, there's not. No problem. That's not copying. That's crap. But when you take your test next week, you will be asked to use at least a couple colors and maybe three colors. So maybe one color, for example, for your HTML, one color for your body, one color for your text. See what I'm saying? And when you do that, I would suggest that rather than just using these things that are right here, start experimenting a little bit. All right, so you can get your own colors. That's all. Because, I mean, if you say, well, yeah, I want cinnamon. All right, that's my favorite color. I'll make you a bet if I come, come through here right now and where we just did this, if I change this to cinnamon, they're going to have something. There you go. Now, you might look at that. That's not really safe. I don't I want to fight with you on that, but you get the idea. You can come up with almost anything. All right. And you said the uh, test is open internet. I can yeah. Do that. Yeah. Can I just easily change the numbers though? Like switch out that color a little bit. Yes. Okay. So if I if I'm gonna. Two ten one five and thirty. You can do it either way. You can change these numbers or these numbers. So what do we got? Two ten one o five thirty. Okay. So I'm gonna say here. RGB 210 105 30. You can already see the color it's going to be, correct? Okay. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to go back and look. Again, pretty obvious. All right. But as Maya was just saying, if I come through here and I change it from 30 to 130, see how that changed? I put more blue into it. So now looks quite a bit different all right there are actually sites that you can go to and what these sites will do is they will say this color goes with this color and this color you know what I'm saying yeah. so if you want to do that you can do that too that's not cheating again what I don't want to do is for example I don't want to come here we're gonna take a break in like one minute but I don't want to come here and say okay this is the color right here that we just looked at. So this is the color right there of my background. Okay, now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put it in there twice. You're like, why? Well, I'm going to come in here and say color. Oops. All right. First of all, that would be dumb. But let's just come back here and let's make that 30 like we had before. All right. Now let's look at it. Now imagine, seriously, imagine you had a person who was colorblind. My brother is. He wanted to join the Navy at 19. They wouldn't let him. It took him seven years to get in the Navy. But he couldn't probably even see that. So you want to make sure that, I mean, what's, what, does it make sense to you? The easiest colors are white background and black text. All right. I mean, some people believe, no, that isn't true. You should do this. So the background should be, let's do pound, 000. zero, zero. All right, now, let, yeah, 000. zero, zero. And for the color, let's do pound FFF. All right, they believe that that's the easiest. Everybody's different, okay? I know of people who have sent out resumes, and they went out and bought black paper, and they typed with white type. And they will tell you they got interviews because of that. Because theirs look different. Other people will say, no, that really turned off a potential employer. I'd never do that. All right? Who knows? All right, it's 8.56. Let's come back, please, at 5 after 9.